What the hell is that thing? Watch out! A twisted and disturbing series not for the faint of heart, The Suffering franchise explored. The Suffering, as well as the sequel, The Suffering Ties That Bind, is two of the most gruesome, nastiest, and simply unsettling games you'll ever come across. Both Suffering games were created by Surreal Software. The game is to follow Tor, a man who may or may not have murdered his family, as he flees a prison and later a town invaded by horrific creatures created in partnership with Stan Winston. Since the publisher Midway went bankrupt in 2010, the games were taken off the market and were no longer available on digital stores, making them only available as second-hand physical copies. All of that has changed recently, as Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment has published both suffering titles for $8.99 apiece on GOG.com. It's about time horror lovers had another chance to see these two gruesome gore fests. Looks like blood, but it's, it's like it's breathing or something. The Suffering is an action horror game about Torque, a man sentenced to death for murdering his family. As the tagline suggests, all hell breaks loose. The instant he enters the correctional institution, Torque must battle for his life in a pitch black prison, overflowing with grotesqueries while also investigating the circumstances that led to his arrest. Those of low faith were already crafting headlines when The Suffering was unveiled, equating the game's name with the experience of playing it. However, those early impressions are far from accurate when it comes to the ultimate result. In a nutshell, The Suffering is a fantastic game that isn't merely a horror game. It does what many story-based games aim for. It suspends your disbelief and transports you into the game's world. There are plenty of jumpy moments and eerie thrills in this game that will affect most gamers physiologically as well as enough psychological material to chew on. Furthermore, The Suffering demonstrates that a game may have a dense atmosphere, horrific happenings, and a lot of gore, without needing to cinematically focus on every single aspect. Because there are just a few cutscenes and most of the plot develops in real time, you may glance about nearly at any moment. The game does a decent job of bringing you to where it wants you to look, but if you miss seeing anything, you'll definitely hear it, which adds to the realism and sometimes even scariness of the experience. Now, let's take a look at each installment in a little bit more detail. The Suffering, 2004. The first part of the series was released in 2004 for Windows, PlayStation, and Xbox. A guy imprisoned in Abbott State Penitentiary on Carnate Island, Maryland, is the protagonist and is controlled by the player. Torque was found guilty and condemned to die for the murders of his ex-wife and two children, despite the fact that he claims to have blacked out and has no memory of the events. A massive earthquake strikes the facility the night Torque arrives, unleashing an army of demons. Torque's cell door bursts, allowing him to escape incarceration. He begins his journey across the prison campus from his cell in an attempt to survive Incarnate Island. Throughout the adventure, Torque discovers that the creatures unleashed personify the island's different types of execution. He's also visited by the ghost of some of Carnate's most famous inmates, including the insane Dr. Killjoy, the former executioner's Hermes T. Hate, and the remorseful killer, Horus. Torque learns to turn into a ferocious monster with their guidance. Killjoy is preoccupied with treating Torque despite his dubious techniques and dispenses hazy medical advice at several moments. On the other side, Horus and Hermes strive to persuade Torque to do good or evil. Along the trip, Torque encounters a number of other individuals, each of whom has a different fate. While navigating the island's wilderness, he can, for example, team up with a correctional officer. Torque is faced with visions of his departed family towards the game's conclusion. Depending on the player's choices, they will either forgive Torque since he did not murder them or blame them for their problems because it was he, in whole or in part, who caused their problems. Though the story is not a masterpiece by any means, still forgive me for giving out spoilers. Now, let's talk about the gameplay a bit.
The Suffering is a standard first-person shooter that uses first-person controls, but allows players to swap between the two camera viewpoints. The player is given weapons that are similar to those found in prisons, i.e. revolvers, Molotov cocktails, and a variety of other less common weaponry. The player is given multiple opportunities to put their morals to the test in the game, generally in the guise of a character struggling to survive the island's horrors. Most of the time, the player is given three options that are either aiding the individual, murdering them, or ignoring their suffering. In the obvious circumstances, a hallucination of Tork's wife will try to persuade him to do the right thing, while demonic spirits will try to persuade Tork to do the wrong thing. The reply of Tork's wife, if done right, indicates good. However, evil, being indifferent, has no response, since it is accomplished by killing someone without direct accountability. The choices you make about these opportunities will have an impact on the game's outcome. Torque's morality level is reflected in the inventory by an image of his family that grows cleaner with good deeds and dirtier with bad. Torque's ability to change into a monster when his insanity meter has been filled by killing other monsters is another aspect of the suffering. Torque may tear adversaries apart in this form and unleash a massive shockwave assault. The player's power increases as he kills more adversaries in this form. The form, on the other hand, has negative consequences. Torque's health will suffer greater harm the longer he stays in this condition. If you let the insanity meter run out, you will die. Torque will not be able to heal himself until he returns to human form. An additional level becomes accessible when the game is completed. The extra, titled Waiting to Die, is a prequel level set when Tork first lands on the island. The game resumes normal play when the level is completed. The level's commentary, which is triggered by touching a crow that settles in a corner of the holding area, says that this level was initially planned to be the first, but was dropped from the game during development for plot reasons. <laughs> The Suffering's visuals are a bit of a mixed bag. Even though we've seen better in recent PC action games like Far Cry, the lighting is adequate. Because the majority of the game takes place within the confines of a jail, it is rather gloomy. Much of the illumination comes from a little flashlight linked to your character, just like in the Silent Hill games. This provides a cone of light effect, which heightens the fear factor. A flashlight, of course, does not last forever, thus keeping track of it is one of the game's obstacles. If you run out of charge, you'll have to play in the dark or throw flares into the darkness to create pools of flickering light. All of these effects are well executed, with shadows contributing to the thick, untamed mood. Other impacts are also impressive. After particularly gory combat, bullet holes remain on walls, blood flows from wounds, and Torque is covered in multiple coats of crimson. The action is fast-paced, animals are terrifying, and the plot has some very gruesome themes. There aren't enough words to describe the horrifying reality that has been built here. Every detail of your surroundings, every action you do, has been designed to heighten the tension, put you in a tense frame of mind. <laughs> The Suffering, Ties That Bind 2005 The sequel was released in the following year on the same platforms at GOG.com. Torque's story continues in Ties That Bind, as he flees the island and returns to Baltimore, where he must once again battle the carnate creatures terrorizing the city, while confronting his wrongdoings and encountering his nemesis, a mysterious criminal crime boss known as Blackmore who is linked to Torque's past and the death of his family. Players with a saved game from The Suffering can select one of three openings dependent on the ending they obtained in the original game. Ties That Bind, like the previous game, has three alternative endings based on the player's choices during the game. The story is simple. Torque is spending time at Eastern Baltimore Correctional five years before the first game begins. He's playing chess with his pal Miles who believes their arrest was engineered by a criminal named Blackmore after being issued divorce papers by Carmen. They are interrupted in their conversation by Blackmore and his crew, who are enraged that Blackmore's rules are being disobeyed. A commotion breaks out as the gang begins to beat up Miles. Fuck all y'all! Ain't no way in the world! <laughs> Torque and Miles are separated and Torque has visions of the beasts he would confront on Carnate five years later. The game then resumes from where it left off in the first game, 
One of three opening sequences plays depending on the player's saved game. Torque wakes up in a warehouse surrounded by mercenaries, where he is presented to Jordan, the chief of a group known as the Foundation, who tells him that the malefactors are his life's work. When the building's electricity goes out, Jordan exits and Torque is free. With hearing Foundation troops claiming that the specimens have escaped, he heads into the sewers after seeing a vision of Carmen telling him he must return to their apartment, where he sees Copperfield, a famed slave hunter, and the Creeper, a pimp turned serial murderer. The story is a bit more complex than the first part, hence I will not spoil it further. Ties That Bind introduces two key changes to the game's pickup system. To begin with, Torque may no longer hoard Zombian bottles, enabling the players to replenish their health at any time. Torque must instead rely on immobile Zobium placed at strategic locations throughout the game. Second, the player can only carry two weapons at a time, albeit he or she can pick up which two they are. The player can carry two melee weapons, two firearms, or two of each. Torque can also dual wield any one hand weapon and ties that bind, including the sawed-off shotgun. Previously, he could only dual wield the pistol in the original game. Minor melee damage can also be inflicted with guns, unlike the prior game when each opponent represented either a type of execution or a historical event on Carnate Island. The foes in Ties That Bind, generally referred to as malefactors, symbolize elements of both current life and past bloodshed on the crime-ridden island. Baltimore's crime-infested streets, slayers represented knife crime, gorgers represent the Baltimore urban legend told to children during the Great Depression to explain why there was no food, arsonists depict unoccupied houses catching fire and murdering squatters within, triggermen symbolize gun violence, mainliners represent drug trafficking, marksmen represent military repression of social unrest, maulers represent the city's slavery heritage, and burrowers represent laborers who perished during the the city's underground construction. Suppressors are a type of CERT unit seen in prisons. Solitary confinement is represented by isolationists, and mob violence is represented by the Horde. Captain strains may also be found among slayers, arsonists, and triggermen. These forms of the beast are immune to conventional weapons, and can only be slain while Torque is in his monster form. They may even create ordinary replicas of themselves. As in the first game, Torque's morality is a crucial aspect of the gameplay in Ties That Bind. At various points throughout the game, player will be presented with a number of options for how to proceed. NPCs are frequently involved in these scenarios, and the options are typical to aid, good morality, murder, bad morale, or ignore them, neutral morality. When Torque first sees an NPC, the player will often hear the voice of Torque's dead wife pleading with him to assist them, followed by the voice of Blackmore, the game's antagonist, pleading with him to murder them. The judgments made about Torque's morality accumulate throughout the course of the game, and the player will receive one of three endings dependent on Torque's final morality level. Torque's morals are generally revealed by his wife's reaction, who will laud him if he does something nice, and Blackmore's reaction, who will praise him if he does anything bad. Torque's morality level may be estimated based on his physical appearance. He will appear less and less human the more wicked crimes he performs, and a family portrait that he keeps with him at all times. The clearer the photo, the purer his morality. If the photo is filthy, crumbled, and smeared with his blood, his morals are slipping. In the menu, there's also a morality gauge that displays you where Torque's morals stand right now. Is there going to be another The Suffering game? The Suffering and its sequel, The Suffering Ties That Bind, are now available on GOG.com after years of obscurity on the PC and without any restricted digital rights management bullshit to boot. The games were originally developed by Surreal Software and published by Midway Games, among others for different versions. The rights are now owned by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. We think the original game was extremely ahead of its time. The game's blend of brutal action and psychological terror is still as powerful now as it was back in the mid-2000s. 
2000s, the sound design in particular sticks out, since it was painstakingly created to be as evocative as possible. This franchise also has a decent cult fan following, so it will be very exciting for them when the next game announcement will take place, but unfortunately, no such announcements or news are shared, so we don't know whether we will ever get another part of this legendary shoot 'em up fest. We are waiting. That's it for this one. If you liked our video, then please do press the like button. Also, share it with your friends and comment on what other games do you want us to talk about. See you in the next one.